Hello, everyone, and welcome to the genomics onboarding for carpentries instructors interested in teaching the data carpentry genomics curriculum. My name is Erin Becker, and I am the associate director with the carpentries, and I will be leading today's onboarding session. This onboarding is primarily intended for people who are already certified as carpentries instructors and are interested in teaching the genomics workshop. Uh, it's also suitable for trainees who have gone through instructor training but are working towards their official certification. Uh, and also applicants who have applied for involvement in the instructor training program and are currently waiting for an opportunity to be involved in that program. Uh, please do note that this onboarding is not a substitute for the two day long instructor training workshop or any stage of the instructor checkout process. If you're not already a certified instructor and you would like to teach at a centrally organized carpentries workshop, please do complete the instructor training uh, and the checkout process. If you're not already a Carpentries instructor, that's perfectly fine. Please do continue with this webinar. Um, Non-certified instructors are more than welcome and encouraged to use and adapt uh, any of the Carpentries lessons for other teaching contexts. All of our materials are licensed CC BY attribution. Uh, so please see our license for usage conditions, but we do highly encourage members outside of our community to use these lessons and adapt them for their own contexts. Also, if you are a non-certified instructor and you're interested in teaching at a Carpentries workshop, uh, you are able to teach at a self-organized Carpentries branded workshop alongside a certified instructor. Uh, so please check out the requirements for running a Carpentries branded workshop through that link. Advantages of completing this onboarding. What is this onboarding intended to do? Uh, over the next 45 minutes or so, uh, these, this onboarding will help prepare you to teach at a data carpentry genomics workshop. Uh, this is a two day long uh, genomics curriculum, so we will not be going over the content of the workshop in detail uh, in the next, uh, within the next hour here. But we will work on uh, looking at the curriculum, its overall structure, uh, what are some of the key uh, confusion points for learners, and some of the things that instructors have found uh, issues with in the past, uh, and also getting, <clears throat> getting an understanding of the data that is used in this lesson. So we'll give you an overview uh, and dig into detail where appropriate. Completing this onboarding will also give you priority placement for teaching at genomics workshops. Not a requirement that you be onboarded in order to teach at a centrally organized data carpentry genomics workshop, but it will give priority to instructors who have gone through this onboarding. What kind of background uh, do instructors need in order to teach this particular curriculum? So instructors will need to have some experience using Bash, which is the default shell on Mac and most Unix, <coughs> excuse me, most Linux platforms. You will have to have some experience um, writing your own Bash scripts. They don't have to be long or complicated scripts, um, but some sort of short Bash script. Uh, and also running programs that others have written through the command line interface. Uh, and you also need to have some sort of experience working with fast Q formatted uh, genomic sequencing data. It's useful if you also have some experience working with and logging onto a remote computer. Uh, whether that's your university cluster or some sort of cloud computing platform, <clears throat> having that experience uh, to log onto and manage your connection to a remote computer will be very useful in this workshop, but is not 
uh, required prerequisite for the instructors. You do not need to have had uh, experience using the specific command line programs that are taught in this lesson. I will go over what some of those programs are, um, but it's much more important that you have experience and comfort working on the command line and working with genomics data than that you've used any particular uh, program for working with that genomics data. You also do not need to have any experience working with the particular cloud computing platform that we use for this lesson, uh, which is uh, Amazon Web Services. I'll talk in just a bit about how we host the lesson data and um, where learners actually do the computation of the workshop, um, but it is not necessary that you have ever used Amazon Web Services before. Uh, the Carpentry staff will take care of all of the backend setup of the AWS instance for your workshop. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about how that happens in just a moment. The very first resource that I want to introduce you to for this workshop is the workshop homepage. Uh, all data carpentry lessons have this workshop homepage that gives an overview of the entire two-day curriculum. Uh, in this particular workshop homepage, there are some additional resources. We've developed a set of frequently asked questions uh, for hosts and for instructors. Uh, that you can browse through, particularly the instructor questions, that may answer some of your questions about this workshop. And those are linked directly from the workshop homepage. We also have information here about the setup for the workshop, which I'll be talking about more in just a moment, uh, and also the data that is used to teach this workshop. The homepage gives an overview of the lessons that are taught in the workshop with a short one or two sentence description of that lesson and also talks about any optional additional lessons in this case for this workshop we do have a, an optional introduction to R and R studio for genomics lesson that is not part of our core offerings yet uh, as of June 2019 uh, and so will not be covered in this onboarding materials. There's also some more information about the teaching platform that's used for this workshop. And again, I'll talk about that in just a moment. If you look also at the extras section of the workshop overview page, you can find um, additional uh, instructor's notes uh, and information about how to launch your own Amazon machine instances uh, for working with these materials. But again, if you're working with them in the context of a workshop, uh, the carpentry staff will take care of that behind the scenes work. Going back to our presentation, the overall workshop structure of this material, it is divided into four lessons uh, two of those lessons are much longer than the others. Uh, so it starts out with a short lesson on project organization and management that is similar in some respects and different in others to the data carpentry data organization in spreadsheet for ecologists lesson. Um, I'll go through each of these lessons in a little bit of detail and point out some of the similarities and differences with other carpentry's lessons you may have taught. Uh, and also point out how they are unique. So the project organization and management lesson is approximately an hour and a half long. Uh, the introduction to command line lesson is, is taught second and is very similar to the software carpentry Unix shell lesson, um, but adapted to working with this particular genomics data set. That takes about four hours uh, to teach and could potentially be taught in a little bit shorter time period if you have a more advanced group of learners who have experience working on the command line before. 
The third lesson and um, kind of the core part of this workshop is the data wrangling and processing lesson, which has no parallel in any of the other carpentries materials and is very specific uh, to working with genomics data. That lesson takes somewhere between four and six hours, depending on the audience that you are working with. Uh, it's better to assume that it will take longer uh, as there are a lot of important concepts covered in this material and it's good not to have to rush it. And lastly, uh, the workshop ends with a short introduction to cloud computing for genomics, which again has no parallel lessons in the other carpentries uh, materials that have been published. Uh, it's about an hour long and it really is um, quite a um, introductory lesson. Speaking about setup and getting started, uh, this lesson, this workshop is taught on Amazon Machine Instance. <laughs> uh, the reason that it's hosted on an AMI <laughs> is uh, threefold. One is that it simplifies the setup for learners and instructors. There is a lot of software that needs to be installed for this lesson to work properly and having learners do all of that specialized software install um, is a distraction from the learning objectives of the lesson uh, and also can take a substantial amount of time uh, away from the core content of the lesson because it's not the specific command line tools that we're actually teaching it's the way of working with those command line tools uh, and those can generalize across other uh, other programs, other platforms that people will be using in the future. We don't want to focus on the intricacies of installing these tools, which can be quite complex, um, but want to provide this uh, preset environment for learners to work in. Second lesson to use this remote um, cloud computing service is that we are dealing with a very large data set. Uh, it's over 100 gigabytes, excuse me, gigabases um, of data. Uh, and so it's very useful to have that uh, stored remotely so that learners don't have to worry about their storage space. Most laptops probably wouldn't be able to handle the computing that we do on this workshop. And third, um, and I think, very importantly, this provides more of an authentic experience for learners uh, than having them do all of this setup and working with the data on their private laptops. In their own work, they're going to be working with large data sets. They're going to be working with uh, potentially tools that other people in their lab use that are installed on a centralized computer so that everybody uses the same workflow potentially. Um, but data sets keep getting larger and larger and so it's very common uh, to have to work with <clears throat> genomics data remotely for simple compute processing power um, issues. So we want to provide that authentic experience for learners. For the instructor's point of view, uh, the staff, the carpentry staff, will create the Amazon machine image and the instance that you will connect to and will provide connection information for you, uh, for your co-instructors, your helpers, uh, if requested for helpers, uh, and also connection information for all of the learners in your workshop. Once you have logged in to the AMI, which you do through your Bash shell, uh, with a single line of, with a single command, uh, then the rest of the lesson becomes almost indistinguishable from working on your local computer. Uh, so if you haven't used AMI before, um, if you haven't uh, done much remote computing at all, this hopefully will not present much of a barrier 
to being able to teach these lessons. I know that I, um, I do have a genomics background. I did my PhD in microbial genomics and I had never worked with AWS. Uh, so I was a little bit intimidated about teaching this lesson the first time, uh, but it really ran very smoothly after logging on to the, the AMI, which was pretty straightforward and staff can help walk you through that. I want to dig now into each of the four lessons uh, in just a little bit of detail. So the first lesson is the project organization and management, which is partially adapted from the data organization and spreadsheets lesson for ecologists. Uh, the similarities are primarily that uh, both of these lessons include a discussion of common spreadsheet formatting problems. Uh, so it starts out with a very messy uh, spreadsheet uh, and asks learners to identify problems that they see with how the data is organized. Uh, and then there's a generally a very nice interactive group discussion about what those issues are. It's a nice, um, it's a nice icebreaker because people like to identify problems with other people's data, with other people's uh, analysis. And so it, it really does provide a good, a good discussion. Uh, there are several differences uh, between this lesson and the ecology spreadsheet lesson. Uh, this lesson does include a discussion of metadata. Uh, so most genomics, most types of genomics data uh, have metadata standards that are required um, when posting uh, that data to whatever the relevant database is. Uh, so there's some discussion of the existence of those standards and pointing learners towards where they can get more information about those standards, but not going into great amounts of detail. Uh, there's also an additional uh, part of the lesson that discusses how to access data on the NCBI SRA. Uh, so this is actually quite nice. It takes the learners through um, once you have a journal article, how do you find the information in that article that will allow you to access the relevant data sets on, in this case, the SRA? Uh, to make room for those additions, this lesson has gotten rid of some of the additional parts in the ecology lesson around data validation and quality control. Those are um, reintroduced in the wrangling, the data wrangling and processing lesson. Uh, so we don't lose the idea of data validation and quality control. It just comes at a later point in the workshop. Uh, we also do remove the dates as data lesson, uh, sorry, episode from this lesson. Um, but there is a little bit of a discussion in it in one of the exercises. So it still comes up as a concept. I do want to make a point about the this particular lesson includes quite a few points of discussion for learners to talk with their neighbors or with a small group um, about a set of questions and it's really important um, not to skip those discussions as it's this is the first lesson in the workshop and that really sets the tone for the workshop and getting people to interact and realize that this is going to be an interactive space uh, will help a lot with motivation throughout the rest of the workshop. If you get people talking to each other early, uh, it will make your workshop more successful in the long run. Moving into our second lesson, which is the introduction to the command line. This is the point at which your learners and yourself uh, as instructors will connect to the AMI using the connection information that's been provided. After they've done that connection, this lesson is incredibly similar to the software carpentry Unix shell lesson. Uh, I'll walk through some of the similarities and differences in just a moment, um, but I do want to also take a point here about motivation. Uh, there is a section at the beginning of this lesson uh, titled, What is a Shell and Why Should I Care? Uh, I know it can be very tempting as an instructor to skip the motivation and just dive straight into code, um, but that motivation is really important for your learners, especially if they've never worked on the shell, if they've never worked on the command line before, 
helping them understand why it is so important, especially for working with genomics data, um, when often you have to work with a remote computing setup, and the only way to do that is through a command line interface, and also when very many of the commonly used multipurpose tools um, are either only available as command line programs or have additional functionality that can only be accessed through the command line interface. Uh, so that motivation is really important. Um, make sure that you uh, get that in at the beginning of the command line lesson. So some similarities and differences uh, between this and the Unix shell lesson in software carpentry. Uh, this lesson covers file system navigation. Uh, so PWD, LS, CD, which are quite standard from the Unix lesson. Um, it covers working with files and directories. So creating a file is creating directories, removing files and directories, moving, copying, renaming them. Um, it covers redirection, uh, tab completion, and wildcards. It does not get into as much depth about redirection as you do in the, um, the parallel software carpentry Unix shell lesson, um, but it does touch on it a bit, uh, which is then important for the third lesson in this workshop, uh, which talks, which uses command line programs that rely on redirection in some cases. Uh, similar to software carpentry lesson, this lesson uses Nano as the text editor. Um, it's straightforward as much as these things are. Uh, it's certainly one of the easiest to use text editors, uh, and it provides the help information directly on the, the text editor screen. So regardless of what you use as your personal text editor of choice, uh, Nano is what's installed on the virtual machine and it's what the learners use for this lesson. This lesson also covers for loops um, and writing bash scripts, which are expanded on in more detail in the third lesson. Uh, and it also includes um, some of these miscellaneous commands that are important, so history, cat, um, grep, which is used in quite a bit of detail in this lesson, um, wc, man, uh, and less. Uh, just to make a note that the man command um, produces a little bit of different output on the AMI uh, than it does at least on my personal machine. Uh, because the installation of Linux is slightly different from what I have on my computer. So if the manual page that you're looking at um, looks slightly different and includes less information than your manual page on your personal computer, that's okay. I like to redirect um, learners' attention to the utility of Googling things if the manual page doesn't provide enough information. There are two additions to this lesson in comparison with the software carpentry lesson. Uh, one is file permissions. Uh, there's an exercise where learners uh, have to create a backup version of their data and change it to, um, to be read protected, sorry, write protected. Uh, and there's also a section on moving data uh, from your computer to the remote computer and vice versa. Uh, and also um, scraping data from the internet through curl. Going into the third lesson in the series, the data wrangling and processing lesson, this is not similar to any of the other Carpentries lessons. Uh, it introduces the primary data set that the learners will work on um, that the learners work with. The previous two lessons in this series worked with um, smaller versions of that data set that were um, used in particular ways. In this lesson, learners kind of dive into the fuller 
larger data set. Uh, and so this lesson walks them through every step uh, in a particular variant calling workflow uh, and ends with them writing a bash script that allows them to perform the complete analysis uh, through executing just a single line of code. Uh, so the idea here is that we are building up uh, an automatic, um, we're building up the capacity to do automatic analysis of the data. Uh, and teaching them each of those steps and then combining them all together at the end to show the importance of automation for repetitive tasks. Uh, this lesson, this slide kind of shows the workflow for this lesson. Uh, so we start out with sequence reads that are in fast queue format, uh, do some quality control, uh, align to the genome, do some alignment cleanup, and then variant calling. The tools that are used in the current version of the lesson for those steps are listed here. So we do some quality control visualization with fast QC. Uh, the learners actually transfer the, this generates an HTML file for each of the sequence files uh, and learners have to transfer that between the remote computer and their home computer uh, to open the HTML, so that provides some practice with that, uh, um, with SCP, with transferring secure transfer protocol across computers. Then they get into uh, trimming and filtering reads with Trimomatic, uh, do some alignment with BWA MEM, uh, file format conversion with SAM tools, variant calling with BCF tools, and then filtering and reporting SNPs with uh, VCF utils. I know that was very fast because I want to emphasize that the particular programs and, and tools that we teach in this lesson are not the important bit of information. It's the fact that we're walking them through a workflow and teaching them how to automate it. In a year or two years, we may no longer be using Trimomatic. Um, that's something that will be determined with time. But the general workflow and the idea of automating the workflow, the idea of um, the idea of for loops and bash scripting, uh, will still be relevant, and the learners will be able to take those tools and apply them to whatever workflow they need to perform for their own research. So don't panic. If you don't know and haven't worked with these particular tools before, it's okay. Uh, you can learn them. I would recommend walking through this entire lesson on your own. If you're familiar with um, any or all of these file formats and you have the appropriate background in genomics, you can walk through these lessons and have a good enough understanding of how these tools work uh, to be able to teach them. Because remember, the thing that you're teaching is not so much the tools as it is the process. You can learn them, it will be okay, I promise. Uh, and the takeaway here is that the data wrangling and processing lesson reinforces uh, the things we've learned before around for loops, uh, setting command parameters, bash scripting, and above all, the importance of automating things that are repetitive and error prone. Uh, two things to note that are important. Uh, because this lesson relies a lot on um, a workflow, a pipeline, each step in that pipeline is dependent on the previous step. Uh, and so if a learner gets behind or um, had to leave the workshop and come back, there's a good chance that they wouldn't be able to catch up um, with the rest of the class. And so we do provide the solutions, all of the solutions files, which is all of the output files for each of the steps and all of the scripts that the learners are writing throughout the lesson. Those are all available in the in a hidden solutions folder. So you have to, um, Notice that period there, that's a hidden file 
Uh, so we'll have to point learners in that direction uh, if, they, if they need help catching up. Uh, and this is something also to alert your helpers for the workshop too, so that they know uh, if a learner is irretrievably behind, uh, that they can uh, point them towards the solutions files. Similarly, if the learners aren't able to pull the data files uh, that are pulled in the lesson directly from the SRA, um, maybe there's internet connectivity issues or some other reason, those files are available in the hidden backup directory, which is also at the uh, level, the home, home directory level. There's one more lesson that is used in this workshop, and that is the Introduction to Cloud Computing for Genomics lesson. It, again, is not similar to any of the other existing Carpentries lessons. It um, provides additional motivation for why learners would use cloud computing, including a discussion of some of the advantages and disadvantages of using uh, cloud resources and um, different cloud platforms. It can't be a comprehensive discussion of all of the cloud computing platforms out there, but we do touch on a couple of the popular ones uh, and also talk a little bit about um, the similarities and differences between using cloud computing and a university compute cluster. Uh, and the core part of this lesson, uh, in addition to that kind of general discussion, is technical tips for how to make sure that your environment when you've logged into the cloud is what you expect it to be and how to make sure that you stay connected to, um, to your, your uh, cloud instance. So that covers the actual content of the workshop. I wanna spend just a couple of minutes talking about how you can prepare to teach and what to do if you have any additional questions. Uh, so the first step in preparing to teach is to read through the instructor's notes for the lessons that you're teaching. They're linked here in order. Um, I'll just look at the data wrangling and processing lesson to show you an example of what these uh, instructor notes look like. Uh, they start out with discussion of the motivation behind the lesson and the overall learning objectives, uh, and then get into the lesson design talk about why the lesson is structured in the way that it is. Uh, there's generally some technical tips and tricks here that give you uh, information on, on problems that learners might encounter uh, and what you might have to do to, to help them uh, get through those, those difficulties. Uh, you'll notice that there are potentially some empty sections in some of these instructor notes. Those are places where we really encourage instructors, especially novice instructors, to contribute their experiences um, either as an issue or as a pull response. You can click the improve this page button and it will open up, uh, an it will open up a text editor for you to suggest an improvement to the to the instructor notes, which will then be reviewed by the maintainers for the lesson. Uh, and they're always very um, excited <laughs> to get uh, contributions from instructors who've actually taught these lessons um, in, a, in a real setting. Uh, going back to our presentation, another thing uh, to do before you teach, in addition to reading the instructor's notes, uh, is to make sure that you go through each line of code in the lessons that you're teaching or each demonstration in the lesson. Uh, in order to do this, you will need access to the AMI, which will be provided for you by the uh, Carpentry staff about one week before the workshop. If you'd like to have more time to work through the materials and would like access to the AMI earlier, please contact uh, Team at Carpentries. Uh, we can provide that earlier access if requested. And last but not least, uh, you're welcome, more than welcome to join a community discussion session, uh, which is a, a weekly, I think we have them twice weekly now, gathering of instructors and other community members to uh, discuss teaching Carpentries workshops and other work that we do in the Carpentries community. So that's a great place to ask general questions about 
the logistics of teaching carpentries workshops. Uh, you have now completed the genomics instructor onboarding. Uh, so you now have priority when signing up to teach at genomics workshops. Make sure that we at the Carpentry staff know that you have completed this onboarding, please, by sending an email to team at carpentries.org. It's the same email that's listed here. Um, just to let us know that you completed the onboarding for genomics so that we can put a note on your instructor profile and make sure that you uh, get priority status when you sign up to teach. In order to hear about teaching opportunities, you'll need to sign up for the instructor mailing list, uh, which you can access through this link. Uh, through that list, you'll get uh, regular emails when teaching opportunities arise. If you don't wanna wait for somebody else to organize a workshop, you can organize one at your institution. If you click this link, you will see some resources about how to host a local workshop, including checklists, uh, email templates, um, information about how to talk about the code of conduct, venue specifics. So we tried to kind of provide uh, as much information as possible there to help people organize their own local workshops. And um, we'd also really like to encourage you to please leave feedback for the lesson developers and for other instructors who are teaching these lessons. Uh, using issues and PRs to the lesson repositories. If you don't know what an issue or a PR is, that is okay. Um, we have an explanation of how to contribute to the lessons that you can access uh, using this link here as well. Lastly, I'd like to just talk about how to get help. Um, so the instructor notes are a good resource uh, to start with. Uh, you can also contact the DC Genomics Slack channel, uh, which is linked there. You'll have to sign up for the Carpentry Slack workspace. Um, once you do, you'll have access to this channel uh, and it's a great place to ask questions. There's generally always somebody on there who can provide some answers. And I'd love to see more, uh, more discussion also on there about teaching experiences. You can also check the frequently asked questions for this workshop uh, to see if the answer to your question appears there. And if it doesn't and you have more questions uh, and you'd like to chat with someone about the workshop, please contact team at carpentries.org and that will go to the appropriate staff member to, to help you out. So that's all of the information that I have. Thank you everyone for um, watching this onboarding video and I hope to see you engaged as an active member of the Data Carpentry Genomics teaching community.